Hello. All right, welcome everyone. So um, this is Miss Mari here from Guru Guru Learning Academy, um, our virtual learning academy. And today, I would like you guys to join us for a virtual field trip. All right, so in the past, I have done some virtual field trips with you guys live streaming as well. And it has been the career tours through Amazon. And those were amazing. I loved them. One was um, about space innovation. Okay, and astronauts as well as engineering. And then there was a two part series about data center tours, right, where we learned about live streaming, actually, which was funny, and how we're able to watch streaming services such as Disney Plus and Netflix uh, from wherever we want in the world. And it can be streamed on multiple devices at the same time simultaneously. So we also learned about the cloud, right, in part two which is where we can store our photos and our memories. And we learned how that works, right? Um, it was pretty cool. We also learned different things about Wi-Fi connections like fiber optic. And now we are going to go on another adventure. However, it's gonna be less career centered this time and less STEM centered, meaning we're going to look at animals, right? Instead of like technology um, and engineering as we were before and science, but animals are still a part of science. And we are going to go with the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Explorers today. First, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about saving the animals, which is what we can see on the screen right now. And then we are going to go on some video virtual tours, um, very similar to the Amazon Career Tours uh, with the wildlife explorers themselves. Okay, um, and then if we have some of our awesome Guru Guru students joining us from our on-site centers, we will be playing some virtual games on the screen. Um, and I'm really excited. I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. So here we go. Um, this is a 45 minute virtual field trip. And um, please feel free to interact with us, watch and join, comment. And all right, let's get started in talking about saving the animals. All right, so here it says, be a wildlife ally, all right? Like the wildlife explorers. Your everyday deeds can help save the day for animals. You might think that, oh, like there's not a lot that I can do, especially for our young students, right? Sometimes I feel like there's only so much and I need my parents' help. Well, let's take a look at all the things that we can do. So the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Explorers Save the World, calling all animal fans, which I know is a lot of our Google students, and uh, I'm sure some of you guys as well, right? This page is where we share ideas of ways that you can help animals no matter where you live. Things you do in your everyday life have an effect on wildlife and their habitats. So let's go see how we can be a part of the Wildlife Explorers team and help save the animals. So first, right, take action. Looking for a way to help protect plants and animals. Your everyday choices can make a difference. Let's go and check out some of these ideas. <laughs> How fast? All right, one second. Let's get this to go off. There we go, so we can see it full screen. Now, number one, choose to reuse. Challenge yourself to use more reusable items like bags, cups, and lunch boxes, and to take only what you need. Um, a lot of you guys might see this when you go grocery shopping with mom and dad, right, with your parents. Instead of getting a plastic bag, maybe some of you guys use reusable shopping bags. I try to do that. I don't always remember my bags, but I try my best. <laughs> now, um, before throwing something away, see if you can find a new use for it, turning trash into treasure. I love doing this with glass jars. So um, even if I buy um, sauces, right, like marinara sauces or, or be what it may from the store, I like to rinse it and seal it. All right, number two, beware of energy vampires. Okay, what does this mean? Not the way we normally use it. Even if something is turned off, it can use or suck up all the electricity when it's plugged into the wall, guys. So unplug electronics like video games and chargers when you aren't using them. Right, so when we're on our iPads, our tablets, if we're not using them and we're not charging, we should unplug them. Be kind to wildlife, right? That's really important and something we can all do. Like even when we're on the playground at school. 
So all wildlife deserves respect, even animals that don't usually get as much love like insects, spiders, frogs, and snakes, because those are the animals that we tend to be really afraid of. <laughs> but we should be nice to them too. They have important roles to play in our ecosystems. So make your yard welcoming to all wildlife by planting pollinator-friendly and native plants. All right, spot check. So keeping track of animal populations is part of protecting wildlife. Scientists gather this information by using trail cameras that take pictures of animals in an area. You can help identify wildlife in the images taken by these cameras online. Right now, we need your help identifying burrowing owls, super cool, in the southwestern United States and wildlife in Kenya. That's in Africa. All right, help slow climate change. It takes community level action, meaning that all of us together, guys, to slow climate change. But your choices can help. Challenge your family to make more meatless dinners or carpool, walk, bike, or even use public transportation when you can. These actions reduce carbon emissions that drive climate change, right? That increase it. Be a responsible pet owner. Who here has a pet? Anyone? I have a dog and I love him so, 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 so much. If you do have a pet, dog, cat, maybe fish or a bird or something more exotic, be a responsible pet owner. Make sure you do your research and are ready for the large responsibility of caring for an animal its entire life. Keep pets, especially cats, indoors if you can, even though I do know many people who let their cats out, and I know it, it does make them happy, but we want to try to protect them, right, as they can protect, they can prey on local wildlife as well, like um, rare birds, endangered birds, and remember that wild animals do not make good pets, <laughs> even though you might find baby squirrels or raccoons, and they're very adorable, they're not pets. Leave no trace. When you explore nature, leave only footprints and take only pictures. Be sure to stay on established trails, right, for safety reasons, um, to also protect you as well as the environment. And never try to approach, touch, or feed wildlife, even though it's really tempting. Instead, observe wildlife respectfully from a distance. Using binoculars or a camera, even just a tiny piece of trash can be harmful to wildlife. So if you can safely pick up litter, place it in the appropriate bin. All right, guys, and last but not least, snack sustainably. All right, so some snack foods are made with unsustainable palm oil, whose production, right, meaning making it, takes habitat away from threatened wildlife. So you can choose snacks that are certified by the Roundtable for Sustainable Palm Oil, or RSPO. Instead, you can ask an adult to download an app to find which of these products are approved by the RSPO. All right, guys, so this is how we can save nature. And now we are going to go to the Wildlife Explorers Adventures, okay? And now we're going to go to the virtual video tour. So let's go and check it out. All right, so here we are, and here's our series. We're going to watch a few of these that we can within our 45-minute um, time period. And <clears throat> it is hosted by the Wildlife Explorers, excuse me. And they're going to talk to us about a few different interesting topics such as the first one will be about animal builders. And here we can see a beaver, right? Because beavers build, they are notorious builders and they build things that actually help our environment and create their own ecosystems within. Let's go find out what that is. Okie dokie guys, here we go. Noodles, I didn't see you all there. Um, Dr. Zoolittle, <laughs> Dr. Zoolittle, where are you? Our guests are here, waiting. Good gracious, with a sight of confusion. Oh, I am so sorry I'm late. Am I late, Roberta? I am late. I can't believe it. I was working in my study and I decided to rearrange the furniture. Wait a minute, Roberta. What's that? What have you got in there with you? Wait, what? There's a lion? Oh no! Oh gosh! Oh wait, <laughs> you mean this? Yes, don't you just love it? I love my home decor. My wildlife care specialist, Mike, made it just for me with leaves. I just love it, don't you? It certainly looks like abstract art, Roberta. 
I uh, think it makes a lovely addition to your habitat. But wait, Roberta, don't say a thing. We haven't welcomed our guests. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Zulittle from the world-famous San Diego Zoo. You've met Roberta. You won't believe the stories that we're going to tell you and the amazing animals we've met on our many adventures. I can't wait to share all my tales with you. So buckle up, because we're about to bring the zoo to you. All right, let's go. Builders. Welcome back. So, Roberta, I see you looking very fashionable in your stripes. I hope one day you'll let me wear the stripes so I can look slim on camera as well. I'm a great now that you're actually here. So, you seemed a bit curious before about my new home decor. I do love it. I love being creative with my habitat. Yeah, I know, I'm pretty amazing at it. Dr. Z, I bet you didn't know that animals are great home designers and great builders. Animals, we have so many talents. Yeah, I'm awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm awesome. Yeah, I'm awesome. I know, I'm awesome. That makes me wonder, which other animals design and build their own homes, and how? I mean, it certainly takes a lot of talent, creativity, and patience. You know, I've got this great idea. My friend Olivia was telling me about some animals at Africa Rocks that design and build their own homes in their habitats. Let's check in with her. Hey, okay, let's go. Africa Rocks Aviary at the San Diego Zoo, there are over 30 different species of very brightly coloured, very intelligent and very hard-working birds. Vertically designed to accommodate birds from the treetops right down to the ground level. And it's home to the splendid sunbird, the bee-eater and the black-headed weaver. These three are some of my favourite species, and I'm going to show you why. Let's start with the black-headed weaver bird. Mm. Very pretty. This male black-headed weaver bird is in the middle of a mating display dance. He's trying to attract a female to his beautifully designed and well-crafted nest. potential suitor has arrived. She seems curious. It's a good start. But upon closer inspection, she seems highly unimpressed. The male has no choice but to destroy his nest and start from scratch. Obviously. Adventuring out on a limb in a new piece of real estate, the determined male begins the process all over again. First, he needs to test the strength of the branches before he starts construction. Now it's time to find the perfect pieces of vegetation to stabilize the area. Carefully, he designs a swing set opening. He must be sure that the entrance is large enough for him and his mate to get in and out of. He will continue to build the frame weave by weave until he has crafted a strong and sturdy nest. That's very impressive. So he's building. After hours of delicate work, it's time to show off his new creation once more. And this time, it's worked. His attention to detail has paid off, and now he can finally start a family. That's beautiful. So 
So the weavers aren't the only ones building nests in this exhibit. Take a look at the top of this yakka tree and see if you can spot a splendid hanging nest. Okay, let's take a look. This is a splendid sunbird and they prefer to have their homes suspended. While it may look a little risky, there's a lot to be said for building a well-enclosed home like this. It camouflages well, it's a great place to sleep, it's protected from the weather and it's an excellent way to keep your chicks safe. These nest builders seem to have it all figured out. Whoa! Stop the film! Stop the film immediately! That was incredible! Did you notice how two birds in the same habitat built two different nests using different strategies? That was incredible! Did you notice how patient both birds were? working so carefully with such precise attention to detail. They need to come help me in my office. And did you notice how that first bird had to start all over again with its first nest? I mean, that's happened to me. I suppose that's happened to you when you're working on a project and all of a sudden you have to start all over again. And it's so frustrating, but that hard work really pays off. I wonder, are there any other animals who design and build their own homes in different habitats? Mm. Roberta, do you any know ideas? of any other animals that build habitats anywhere in the world? So we saw another animal on the cover before we started our video. I do Polar know birds. a few other creative builders in the animal kingdom. Dr. Let's Z, see. let's play a little game to see if you and our friends watching can figure out which animal architects created these amazing structures in their habitats. This animal home is found on the dry, open plains of southern Africa. It's located mm. below the ground, where the temperature is much cooler. Look closely. It's a series of tunnels. There's even several different chambers or rooms, including a bathroom chamber. Ah, oh, yes! Wow. This home belongs to a the meerkat. meerkat. A group of meerkats is called a mob, and they oh, will work cute. together to dig their tunnels. Okay, on to our like to next own. animal the creation. Language. Oh, look, it's a ball. And guess what? It's made of poop. These oh. balls can be twice the size of the animals who create them. And hold on, because it gets even stranger. If you were to look inside this ball of poop, you'd find eggs. Wow. There you have it. Ooh, These the perfect dung balls were created by a true recycling champion, the dung beetle. The balls act as a nest to hold their eggs as they push them from one place to another. I like to think of it as a poop stroller. This last animal builder lives in the grasslands and deserts of North and South America. Its home might seem similar to our meerkat tunnels because it's made of soil, but take a look. This animal has also added grass and feathers to its burrow. I feathers. think this animal so has an eye for design. A it's the burrowing owl. owl. This clever bird will usually find another animal's burrow then use its beak and feet to make it bigger. Home sweet home. Well, That's awesome. how did you do on the guessing game? I, I had so good. much fun seeing all the different animals putting their homes together in their habitat. Have you seen those structures before? I have to admit there was one animal that I thought should be on Roberta's list. Let's see if you can guess which animal I am thinking. Mm, this okay, animal see, builds guess. next to water. Okay. This Next animal uses its teeth as tools. Uses its teeth. This animal comes from right here in North America. North America. I think we Any saw it on the cover of the of If the you said beaver, video. you were absolutely correct. Good job. I, did. We saw a beaver. I want to learn so much more about the beavers and about their animal building skills. And I know just the person who's gonna help us out. Jeff, the nature guy from Zoo Montana. He is going to introduce us to one of the cutest beavers on the planet, Baby Shiloh. And he's going to show us how beavers, when they build their homes, they just don't help themselves, but their neighbors as well. Let's go. Hey guys, Jeff the Nature Guy here at Zoo Montana. I want to introduce you to Baby Shiloh. <laughs> 
And I know she it's doesn't look like careful. a baby right now, but look at her just a year ago. And get this, she's a miracle baby. She wasn't even supposed to be born, but she was. But she was born really sick. <laughs> But amazingly, the veterinarians did an unbelievable job, and so did the zookeepers here at the zoo, to raise her, and now she's a big, giant, healthy beaver. And like all beavers, they have those giant teeth they use to, of course, tear down trees. And they're really good at it. And what's so important about beavers is when they knock those trees down, they create wetlands and they actually create new homes for other animals. And that's why we call the beaver a keystone species. That's a big word. But what it means is they are responsible for creating homes for hundreds of different animals. Get this. They'll knock a tree over. They'll create a dam. They'll block the water that creates a big pond. And that pond then becomes home to reptiles, amphibians, even birds like owls that live up in the trees. Fish, so important for so many different other animals out there. So they create whole ecosystems just by building. Keystone species. Got it. They're so cute. So beavers, yeah, they can be destructive, but they are so much more important. Baby Shiloh, so incredible, and a miracle baby at that. You gotta love it. Wasn't baby Shiloh the cutest thing you ever saw? And I have to admit, seeing her eating all those treats got a real hunger in my belly. I have snacks all around me, all the time in my habitat. You're on your own, Dr. Z, with snacks. I have to admit, Roberta, <laughs> I don't think your snacks look appetizing at all. In fact, they look rather gross to me. You know, Roberta, I have got an identical twin brother, Chef Zulittle, and he's on standby to make one of my family's favorite treats. It's called a riparian treat, a beaver dam. And he's going to whip that up for you. It's easy to make and delicious to eat. Here he is, Chef Zulittle. Today we are going to make a no-bake beaver dam. Now wait a minute, that sounds silly. How do you cook something that is no-bake? Well, let me show you. First, we need some equipment. For our equipment, we are going to use a large microwavable bowl. I'm going to use this lovely spoonula. You can use any sort of bowl scraper or rubber spatula that you prefer. I like this one because it has a nice spoon shape. We are also going to need some wax paper and, of course, an oven mitt. Safety first, you know. For the ingredients, we have equal parts chocolate chips and then another flavor of chip of your choosing. Butterscotch would be a nice choice. In this case, I'm using some delightful peanut butter chips. We also then have the same weight of pretzel sticks or wonton noodles. I'm going with the pretzel sticks myself today. And then, of course, if you really wanted to make it an authentic Chef Zulittle recipe, you might also consider including your beetle larvae and crickets. My goodness. No? No, right, we'll save those for not for time. me. <laughs> the next step is to microwave our chips. Now, again, I have three ounces each of the chocolate and peanut butter chips, which are going to go into my microwave for 30 seconds. It's very important to do this in brief increments. I'd say no more than 30 seconds at a time. Take out the bowl, stir things up with your spatula, see how nice and melty the ingredients are, and then if they need more time, pop them back in. For this amount of chips, I'm guessing probably close to a minute to a minute and a half. Alrighty, we have progressed to a point where things are nice and melty. I'm going to use my spoonula to give my chocolate and my peanut butter a nice mixing right here. And then I shall gradually add in some pretzels. Let's just add in a few at a time. And you'll see what I'm going to do is use my spoonula to lift the chocolate up off the bottom and fold it over onto the incoming pretzels. Get a few more pretzels in here now. And if you break up a few pretzels, that is not the end of the world. Remember, beaver dams are made of sticks and twigs and logs of all shapes and sizes. So if you end up breaking a few pretzels, that's okay. Do try to be nice and gentle though, as we do not want to turn our pretzels into sawdust. Alrighty then, things are looking nice and coated and here comes the fun part. 
this is where we get to get a little bit messy with your nice clean hands. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to reach in, grab with your spoon a nice first. big scoop of the sticks. You're going to put them onto the wax paper and you're going to pile them up. Get the sticks going in every different direction and this is going to make the shape of your beaver dam. So there we go. Lots of sticks going in all different directions. Let's do a couple more. There you have it. Continue until all of your ingredients are used and now's the best part. When you get to lick those chocolatey fingers, here we go. Mm. <laughs> delicious. Mm. 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 And that, my friends, is how you make a delicious no-bake beaver dam snack. Oh, I'll get to that later. Well, we've seen a lot of animals building homes in their own habitats. And do you remember how Jeff the Nature Guy said that beavers, when they build their dams, they're actually building habitats for a lot of other animals in their area. That's called teamwork. And I love teamwork. I work with all my siblings, all the other Dr. Zoolittles. And I also work with Roberta. Okay, friends, I'm talking to you. Yes, okay. you. Tell me about teamwork you do at home. You know, like chores or things you do to be helpful. Ah, yes. Mm. I'm hearing some good ones. Oh, cleaning, cleaning your room. room. Nice. Doing oh. the dishes. Oh, helping fold the laundry. Yes, a suck sorter. A very important job. Wow, you are all such great team players. This reminds me of my friends Kelly and Chris at the San Diego Zoo, who work with some of the best team players in the animal kingdom. Let's check them out. Chris, were you working with the leaf cutter ants? Yeah. Did you get ants in your pants again? Maybe. How silly. Marbles. You may not have ants in your pants, but if you live in certain parts of the world, you may have leafcutter ants in your backyard. If you see large brown ants walking along a straight line with little chunks of leaves on their head, you've found your ants. Leafcutter ant colonies live in Central and South America and can also be found in parts of the southern United States. Now a lot of people think that all ants are really, really small, but leafcutter ant workers can be over half an inch long and the queens can be even larger. These ants have the right bite for cutting leaves. Their jaws are specialized for cutting pieces of plants, which they then carry back to the underground nest. Most people think that leafcutter ants actually eat the leaves that they cut, but they don't. In reality, leafcutter ants eat fungus. After licking them clean and cutting them into smaller pieces, they tuck the bits of leaves into the nest chambers to help the fungus grow. In turn, the leafcutter ants eat the fungus, which means they grow their own food. Do you have chores that you do around your house? Well, in a leafcutter ant colony, almost every single ant is a worker. And they do chores around the colony based on their body size. The smaller ants, called minims, usually stay in the underground nest to help take care of the fungus, as well as take care of the eggs that the queen has laid. The larger worker ants, called majors, will help lift the heavy things as well as defend the colony. Pretty cool. And if there's danger, how do you think they would warn one another? Do they yell, look out, like you and I would do? No, that's not right. Ants use certain chemicals to communicate to each other to let them know where there's a really good food source to take back to the colony or where there's danger. So cool how they can communicate. So the next time you have chores to do, do it like an ant, bit by bit, and maybe even turn it into a team project. Oh, leaves are my favorite! That actually reminds me, I have a perfect joke. What do you call a really, really big ant? A giant! Oh, and what did the tree say to the wind? Leave me alone! I don't know about you, I still can't get enough leaves. I love to eat them, decorate with them, talk about them, dream about them. Hey, do my friends at home want to learn to make their own leaf art? You know, like mine? Ooh, Wildlife care cool. specialist Mike can show us how. Leaf art. Anybody here made leaf art before? I have once, and it was really fun. Especially collecting the leaves outside. That was the best part. And we're in fall. Made the 
looks like a leafy turtle. Okay, now what is she gonna be there? It looks like a leafy elephant, maybe? And that's the trunk. That's adorable. That's my favorite animal. Maybe I'll make the elephant. Wow! I had a spectacular time. I learned so much about animal builders and about the teamwork that they do to build their homes and their habitats. Just like we work in teams with our friends, our families, and our teammates, and even our classmates. Hey, have you ever been outside and seen some animal construction going on? Perhaps you see an ant carrying something from one place to the next, or you look up Ooh, and you nice. see a bird flying towards a nest. I mean, that is incredible. Stay curious, my friends. Stay curious and keep asking all those questions. In fact, if you've got any questions, jokes, stories, poems, email them to us. Get an adult to help you out at Z for Zoo Little and Zebra, mail at sandiegozoo.org. And if we use your question, your poem, your story, your joke on the air, we'll mention your name as well. Until you join us again when we visit with some more amazing animals and their habitats. See you soon. Oh, that was awesome, guys. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. And now we're going to go and play a few games together, activities, and we're also going to look at some actual um, live cams of the cute animals at the San Diego Zoo. So let's go and take a look. These are the cams that they have. So let's go and take a look at some of our favorite animals. I already mentioned my favorite animal is an elephant. So I'm going to go to elephants first, but please feel free to drop us a comment and tell us what your favorite animal is. Let's go look at our options first so you guys can see all the ones that you can choose from. Let's, there we go. So our options are we have an ape cam, a baboon cam, burring owl cam, a condor cam, elephant cam, giraffe cam, hippo cam, koala cam, panda cam, Penguin cam presented by Alaska Airlines, platypus cam, polar bear cam, the red panda cam, so cute, and we have the tiger cam. So what are you guys thinking? I'm thinking elephants, but as I said before, we are monitoring those comments. Feel free to let us know what you would like to see, okay? Now let's go take a look at some cute elephants. I'm so excited. It's loaded. So I have turned on the volume, but it looks like there is no sound for them. This is live, which is why it took a moment for it to stream to us, the same way that my stream takes a moment to reach you. But this is super cool. So this is happening right now in San Diego at the zoo. Mm -hmm. So we have elephants. Now, Elephants are my favorite animal because I think that baby elephants are so cute and I just also love that they are big, powerful, but mostly gentle shepherds. <laughs> also, my family also loves elephants just from where they're from and part of the world. Um, and I love to see them spray water from their trunks. They have big tusks. Looks like they're eating. What do you guys think they could be eating? Hmm. So cool. All right, my friends. It looks like this could be a baby and a mama because he's so tiny. And the tusks haven't grown out very long either. If you look, their tusks are super teeny tiny short. <laughs> Oh, like they're nuzzling. Maybe that's the mama. 
And I always love how elephants' ears flap. See how their ears are going out? Their tails are wagging. Look, I think he's eating some hay or some straw. <laughs> Has anyone here ever seen an elephant in real life? I have only seen them in the zoo, but I have seen them in real life at the zoo. And now he's moving the box. I think he's looking for more treats inside. Okay, my friends, now let's go and check out another animal. Let's go and see. Okay, we'll check out, I think, maybe two more so. And then um, we're going to also do one last activity together. If you guys join me live, um, in our Zoom meeting, like any of our on-site students. You guys are more than welcome to draw on the screen along with me. We're going to do a little word search activity for endangered animals. Because as much as I love these cute, cute animals here, some of them need our help, right? And one of them that we're gonna look at is the tiger cam for that reason. Because there are some tigers that are endangered animals. And then the next one after we're going to look at is either the panda or the polar bear. We'll see. If anybody has a preference, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I might do an any mini mini email. <laughs> All right, let's check out our tiger cam. Awesome. Let's see if there's sound. No. <laughs> no sound. So you see here, I do not spy a tiger. I'm looking very closely. That must mean that the tiger's off exploring somewhere else. So we may have to switch it over. I'm gonna look really closely, really closely. They must be exploring somewhere. But as I mentioned before, we have tigers that are endangered species, which means that soon they could be extinct and they won't exist anymore. We wanna to try to save them and prevent that from happening. All right, friends, let's go back and let's check out Panda Cam then. I think we'll have time for both, Panda and Polar Bear. And then we'll go to our activity and we'll close out for the day. So let's see. This is archival footage, which means that this is not live, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see, because it is loaded. But, mm -hmm. Ah, oh, it is okay because this is panda numbers. Looks like we have some workers, which we will come back. Um, we will in the future uh, do more tours, virtual field trips with the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Explorers because you know today we only saw episode one. And there are many more that give us so much helpful information about these awesome am animals, how they contribute to our world. Like today when we learned about animal builders. All right, my friends. Now let's go back and let's take a sneak peek. Let's see if we can see hmm, maybe giraffes. Me, before we go to our last activity. So if you guys have ever been to the San Diego Zoo, it looks just like this. It really does. Um, I have gone a few times. I used to live really close to San Diego. And I have gone to the zoo even when I was younger, when I was a little kid, and even as an adult. So oh, look, we can't see giraffes, ironically enough, but I do see, I think that looks like, hmm. Not a gazelle, maybe a, an antelope, maybe? Maybe, it was far away. Don't quote me. <laughs> oh, I see some small animals back here. I also see some birds, if you guys can see that. And I think what looks like another antelope or gazelle here. Not sure, but it has long horns. But it's not a rhino, because here it says there's rhinos as well. Super cool, guys. OK. I want us to see as many animals as we can. Let's try and see if we could fit a few more. How about the hippo cam? That sounds like fun, because they are in water. OK, let's take a look. So this one is live, too. Let's see where they're at and what they're doing. 
Yeah. Hi, I'm trying to connect with Miss Angel. And do you know what room she is in right now? Yes, she's in breakout room one. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so here we can see this big hippo's eating. Um, to me, I would think it's seaweed, but I don't think it is. <laughs> and I like that the camera is turning for us so that way we can have a wider range of view. What was would be really cool is what I was thinking is what if we could see under the water, like when they're swimming. And if you do go in person, there are parts of this exhibit where you can go up and there's a tank or more of a glass wall, I guess is a better way to describe it, where you can see slightly under the water and when you're swimming past or walking past slowly. <laughs> so hippos are super cute, especially when they're babies, but they are very dangerous. And if I'm not mistaken, um, there are more hippo accidents in, in Africa, hippo attacks, and there are lion attacks. Uh -huh. So these are some scary animals. But all right, guys, now let's go and take a look at our activity. Um, we have it here. Where did it go? This one. All right, so our endangered species. So here, now we're going to take a look. And as I said, those of you who are in our Zoom room, feel free to try and annotate. Let me change the top here really quick. There we go. So here are some of our endangered species on our list, guys. We have an Adax, a Babirusa, a Banteng, a Bonobo. A Bonobo is like, um, it looks like a chimp, right? Uh, like a large chimp or a small gorilla, but it's not. And then we have a cheetah, a dole, a gharial, gorilla, a jaguar. Akagu, Ananjo, Marge, Orangutan, Hudu, Siamang, Sifaka, a Tiger, and a Tuatara. Some of these animals have crazy names. Feel free to jot them down, write them down, and look them up later, right? You might want to learn more about these animals. Let's see what we can find in our last five minutes. All right, I see, I think I see Jaguar. I do. Let's use my pencil. Let's use Jaguar. Aha, okay, and let's see, um, cheetah. I really like cheetahs, and I think cheetah print is really, really pretty. But they are endangered, so we have to protect them, right? And what else can I find here? I feel like I can see a word here with this K. Mm -hmm. Some of these words are really tricky. Gorilla. And I see orangutan. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can find bonobo. Hmm. B, B, O, B, O. Oh, well, I found tiger. So let's use tiger. <laughs> and that's why we did look at the tiger exhibit, because as I mentioned before, they're endangered, but we didn't get to see them. They were hiding from us. And let's see if one more minute we can do this, guys. And remember, if you see anything, feel free to give me a hint. If we see Pudu, no. <laughs> that was close, but not quite. Okay, I'm back to looking for Bonobo and I found it. There we go. So not bad, okay, and I feel like I found the most common animals on our list, if not the only common, right? The only ones that I have seen before, maybe a manjo, possibly. Let's see if we can find that bird. Mm -hmm. This is a tricky one, guys. I did find a margue. But not a mandrel. Oh, now I found the mandrel. Okay, I'm getting better at this. And let's see. Hmm, which of these other endangered species can we find on this grid? What do you guys think? Okay, we have two minutes. 
and some seconds, and some seconds, of course. Oh, I found the Pudu. Okay, do you think we can find them all? I don't know, that would be really cool if we could. I see the Dolan. Come on, we got it. There we go. Uh, maybe I can find the Addix. That's here. Um, the Babarusa. Let's see if we can find the Babarusa. I did find it here. The Bonte. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I see it here. Ariel. Oh, there's not too many Gs. Maybe this won't be too difficult. Let's see. Let's look at my three Gs first. This one is not used, but it doesn't have an H. Okay, let's see over here. Gariel. Ah, here. The G was used for gorilla. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can find a Kagu. Hmm. Kagu. Nope, this was Agu. They tricked me. This is Kagu. I think we're going to do it, guys. It was awesome. Perfect timing then. Hey, give me my word. Thank you. Um, three more. Okay. Uh, Siame here at the top. Sifaka here on the right. Oh, yay. this is celebratory. Okay. And the last one, if they will let me. There we go. To a tar. Okay, let's see if we can find it. It is here, right at the bottom center. We got 18 out of 18 points. Congratulations to us. <laughs> okay, guys, um, that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour in the beginning. Remember all the tips that we went over when we wanted to talk about how we can save the animals, right? That even goes down to us recycling, um, not using up too much energy and unplugging our devices if they're not being charged or currently used, right? There were so many tips that they gave us. Um, we learned a lot today about animal builders, right? From different birds who build and weave very intricate and impressive nests to, um, well, what else did we learn about? Um, oh, what's that cute animal that is Timon from the Lion King? Meerkats, there we go. The meerkats who build burrows that have rooms and even bathrooms like separate quarters underground and we learn of course about the beaver who creates entire ecosystems with their dams and for that reason they call them a keystone species right so they're super important here we also um, reviewed some of our endangered species and we got to check some of them out on a live cam. So if you guys enjoyed this as much as I did please join us again next time for our virtual field trip but for today over and out. Um, all right, guys. I hope to see you next time. This is Miss Mara from our virtual Google Learning Academy, and I hope you all have a good evening. Bye.